So you wanna sell your company to a private equity fund. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through what that process looks like and the best way to present yourself to get the very best deal possible for you and your company. And stick around to the end because I'll give you a tip that will really help demystify the process even further and give you a leg up as you work through the process of selling your company. So the first thing I wanna talk about is that there is a general standard way that deals get done. And the thing that's kind of unfair, to be honest, is that an entrepreneur may sell their company, you know, once, twice, maybe three times in their lifetime. Whereas a private equity investor is going to execute, you know, probably, I don't know, five to 10 to 20 transactions just in one fund. And so it's really in a lot of ways, like not a fair process in that you have somebody with a lot of information and experience working with somebody that's got very little experience. And that can result in some imbalance during the negotiation process. And so my goal here today is to talk about what that process looks like so that you come to the table with a clear understanding of what to expect and what the private equity investor is also expecting the process to look like. And the last thing I wanna add about that is that the closer you stick to the standard quo, the smoother things are gonna be. And the smoother things are, the more likely it is that you are gonna be able to get the deal you want. So the reason why you wanna de-risk things as much as possible is because as an investor, if my risk is lower, I'm willing to pay a little bit higher price or give on certain things that I might not otherwise give on because I've been able to de-risk the business and still generate the return that I want in a risk-adjusted fashion. So with that, let's dive into what the general process and timeline looks like. So first, you should work on getting everything cleaned up in the business. Now to do that, I would hire a good accounting firm. The better the accounting firm, the more well-known they are, uh, the better the brand, the more helpful it will be through the process. So basically pay up for the best accounting firm you can. If you can afford one of the big four, get one of the big four to come in, clean up your books, audit the business. Uh, if you can't afford an audit or you can't afford a big four, go with a really big regional firm, et cetera, et cetera. Do not go with like, you know, your friend's bookkeeper down the road. Get somebody good. Have them help you clean up all of your financials and make sure everything is buttoned up and clear and clean. That will be a huge help to you and to the private equity investor. It will help you be able to negotiate on things that are more important to you later on because the private equity investor will have more confidence in the actual numbers that they're investing behind. The next thing is once you have gotten everything cleaned up, you wanna start building your data room. So your data room is gonna have your formation docs. It's gonna have your org chart. It's gonna have resumes for your key executives. It's gonna have your financials, both your historicals, your budgets, et cetera. It's gonna have your major contracts with customers. It's gonna have a capitalization table that breaks out who owns what. It's gonna have any lawsuits that you're currently going through. It's gonna have uh, details around your trademarks, your patents, all of those types of things will all be found in your data room. As you're building that data room, the next thing you can do is you can start working with both lawyers and investment banks. Investment banks can play a critical role during this process. That's because an investment bank or an investment banker is essentially like a realtor for your business. So they're gonna represent you and they're gonna go out and they're gonna meet with lots of different private equity firms and tell them about your business and why it's such a great opportunity and really sell it. Then what they'll do is they'll manage kind of that whole negotiation process. So they'll help manage bids that come in, they'll push back, they'll act on your behalf, and they can basically negotiate things and be that disinterested intermediary and deliver the hard news, push back, play tough cop, uh, nice cop, right? Whatever it takes to get the deal done. They also become kind of your allies. Like I said at the beginning, your typical entrepreneur may not have done many of these transactions, but a private equity investor has. But you know what, investment bankers have done even more transactions typically than your private equity investors because they're selling businesses all the time to lots of private equity funds. And so they have a pretty good view on what's happening in the overall market, much better than a private equity fund. And that's why working with a good investment bank can be really helpful. How do you pick a good investment bank? My recommendation is to find investment banks that have worked with other companies in your sector. Ideally, 
If you're familiar with companies that have been acquired by private equity firms, maybe in other states, other regions, whatever it might be, look at who they used as their investment banker and see if you can work with that same investment bank. Now there's also tiers of investment banks. So you can have very, very small, you know, might only be one person shops all the way up to your big Wall Street players like Goldman Sachs. Now, the challenge is, is that the investment bankers are gonna do their due diligence on you to determine whether or not they wanna work with you. And the really good investment banks typically are gonna be expensive as well. And so it's another one of those games, just like the accounting firm, where you wanna get the very best investment banker that you can, especially ones that have done a bunch of transactions in your space, because they're gonna know investors in your space that would be interested in your company. Oftentimes I've seen investment bankers that don't really understand the business or don't really have the right connections to investors and private equity firms that would find that business interesting get hired by companies and then the company is at a loss as to why the investment banker didn't actually perform for them. So find, find an investment banker that knows your business. And again, a lot of investment banks will put right on their website all of the different deals that they've closed in different sectors and industries. And so look for ones that have closed some that are related to your industry and your sector. All right, once you've got a good investment bank, they're gonna help guide you through the process as well. But the other steps you should be aware of is you're gonna pull together your data room, your financials, get everything cleaned up. You're gonna work with your investment banker. They are then gonna go out and do essentially a roadshow where they will set up meetings with different private equity funds. They send out a teaser, the private equity funds then raise their hand and say, yeah, I'm interested, and take a meeting. Those meetings are an opportunity for you to pitch your business to these different private equity funds. Tell the story about what you're doing, why it's a great investment, et cetera, et cetera. After you've done your little road show, private equity funds will typically be invited to do what's called a bake-off, where they are submitting their bids on what they would pay for the business. Now this is not necessarily completely binding, but it is kind of like getting engaged. So the investment banker will take on all these bids, they'll work with you to select the bid that is the best, and there's gonna be a lot of factors that you're gonna, you're gonna take into consideration. You may not take the highest bid. You might care about you know the type of people that you're working with or the type of structure. Like Maybe they want you still to be in the business and somebody else is willing to pay less, but they're willing to just cut you a check and you're out and done. It just depends on what your needs and interests are. So you'll go through and with the investment bank, you'll pick the, the fund that you wanna work with. Typically there's a little bit more negotiation back and forth on some of the like finer details. And then from there, you enter the diligence process. So at that point, the private equity fund is basically gonna go super deep into the business. They have law firms, accounting firms, and, and they're gonna do background checks. They're gonna do all kinds of things to really dig in deep on the business to ensure that it's structured properly, that there are no skeletons in the closet, that background checks come back clean and there aren't any like you know lawsuits or potential lawsuits hanging out there that could surprise them. And once they do all of this, what's called confirmatory due diligence, then they'll work on pulling together the transaction. And this is where the lawyers really get involved. So make sure you have a good law firm and your investment bank should be able to help you identify a good law firm to help negotiate this transaction. Again, this is an area where you want somebody that knows what they're doing, because I guarantee you the private equity fund is going to have lawyers that know what they're doing. So you wanna be able to be right there with them and be able to negotiate the terms that are important to you. Those attorneys are gonna negotiate the final docs uh, that, that will consummate the, the transaction and the deal, and you'll work towards a final close. At the final close, essentially what happens is everybody, the docs are finally negotiated, everybody signs, wires go out and hit bank accounts, and the transaction is effectively closed. Oftentimes we'll do like a closing dinner to celebrate. Uh, and this whole process probably takes in the range of about six months. All right, so here's my big tip. Thanks for sticking to the end. That is go find an associate, not an analyst, an associate or a VP at a private equity fund that has acquired other businesses somewhat similar to yours. And go talk to them, go buy them lunch, pick their brain and ask them about their process 
and how they approach doing deals. Ask them about the different investment banks that they know and respect. Ask them about deals that they've done that have gone well, deals that have not gone well. Ask them like what tips they would give an entrepreneur that was starting up the process of potentially selling their business. Ask them, you know, at what stage should you consider selling your business? The reason that you want one of these kind of junior guys is that they are the ones that are doing the bulk of the work and also they're going to be the most flattered to take your call and spend time with you. Now, meeting with the the partners at the fund can also be an incredibly valuable experience as well, and so it's worth doing that. The one caveat that I'll ha- add there though is that there's this concept of shopped deals versus proprietary deal flow. And private equity firms will t- you know tell investors till they're blue in the face that the majority of their deals are proprietary deal flow, i.e. that they had a relationship with the entrepreneur and they didn't have to rely on an investment bank to bring them into the deal. Now, the reality is, is that investment banks bring most private equity funds into deals, and that's kind of more the status quo of how it's done. And the reason for that, and what I'm trying to warn you about, is that if you use a good investment bank, you can get a much better deal for your business because you're getting shopped to a lot of different private equity funds. If you go and you build a relationship with this other fund, they may try to pursue you aggressively to keep you from doing a shopped deal because they don't want to overpay. So just keep that in mind. Ultimately though, if you build a great relationship with the private equity fund, there's nothing wrong with going with them. And sometimes that can result in the very smoothest process because they already know you, they already have a relationship with you, they've already started to do some initial diligence on you. Anyways, I hope that video was helpful. Be sure to check out some of my other videos like will valuations get back to their 2021 levels? Thanks.